Okay, folks. Now we are officially cooking with gas. We've defined sampling distributions of the mean, of the portions, of the variances, sampling distributions of any statistic, really, if we wanted to talk about it. Central limit theorem, which is what we're going to talk about today, we are not going to prove it. I actually had to prove this in some graduate work. It, 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 it's no fun. It would take us a week to do it just to get the mathematics uh, where we needed it to be. And it requires calculus and a number of other techniques that we just don't have time to, to discuss, especially for those of us that don't have calculus. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, this is really where the rubber meets the road. It's because of the central limit theorem, which I'm about to show you, which we're about to talk about, that we are able to do everyth everything that we're able to do in what are called parametric statistics or statistics around uh, population um, values such as mean, mu, standard deviation, sigma, et cetera, et cetera. All right, but first, let's do a little exploration. I'm going to show you, this is an applet that comes with the disk in your book. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out of the book real quick. All right, I'm going to show you something really cool. All right, so first things first, all that we're going to concentrate on is, is this little bit right here. All right, but I want to show you what happens. I want to prove to you what happens. Unfortunately, this applet only has um, things for sample means, not for uh, sample standard deviations. So it's very difficult to do sampling distributions around standard deviations with, with this applet. In fact, it's impossible. Um, it also doesn't talk about sample proportions, but I think that this will give you, give you the, an idea. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to pick a sample of size n equals 10. Now notice I can drop this down and pick 30, 50, and we'll play with all of those. But for now, let's just start with 10. Okay, so think of this as randomly selecting samples. Now, in class, we're going to discuss, should we do this with replacement Ripley? Should we allow samples to keep jumping back into our samples of size n, or should we exhaust all of them? There are arguments for both, and we'll discuss it in class, okay? But for now, let's just assume that we're just going to keep grabbing random samples of size 10. So there, there can be a certain degree of, of uh, replacement, although it's not very likely. Okay, and we're going to do this. Now, this n is a little misleading. This is not saying that n is the size of our population. What it's saying is, is we're going to do this a thousand times. Okay, and then we're going to look at what the distribution looks like, or I guess that's ten thousand. But I'm going to start. I'm going to start slow. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to do it one time. Okay, and watch what happens. All right, we have a mean, which is between zero and fifty. Okay. Oh wait, I've got some more explaining to do. In this case, the population that we're drawing from is bell-shaped or it's normal. Okay? It's got a mean of 25, we don't care about the median, and it's got a standard deviation of 8.2239. Okay? So, what I did is I did this I did this one time. I grabbed 10 10 things all right, I, I don't, we don't even care what we're asking. I don't know, a number of zero to 50. Uh, the number of times last month you kissed your mom on the face. I don't know, something silly, right? We took the average number and here it sits. All right, now I'm going to do it a hundred times. I'm going to do it a thousand times. I'm going to do it 10,000 times. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, really, I've done it 11,101 because I scrolled through. Now, I'm going to keep doing this. When I hit sample, it's going to keep, it's going to keep just adding to this distribution. Watch. So, look at that. Becomes more and more and more normal. Now, I want you to notice something. The mean of this distribution is 25.0003. The mean of the population is 25. Now, the standard, de the standard deviation of this population is 8.2239. The standard deviation of this population, or of this, of the this, this sampling distribution is 2.6. So let's go 8.2 and 2.6. I'm going to write those down just for fun, okay? I'm going to write the mean is 25 and the standard deviation uh, what is that? Eight point. Let's just call eight point two. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce some notation here. The mean of the means. Okay. That's really the mean of this distribution. Is twenty five for all intents and purposes. Hey, it's an unbiased estimator. Who knew? The standard deviation of the sampling distribution 
is 2.6 or approximately 2.6. Okay? Excuse me. This is sometimes referred to, by the way, as the standard. I know the, the vocab in this can be a little daunting, but again, just make flashcards, don't be afraid. The standard error of the mean. Think about it. Standard deviation is really just an error measurement. All right, so the standard error is the error that comes from the sampling distribution, in this case, of sample size n equals 10. Okay, now, okay, so this was when n equaled 10. We're just writing some stuff down. We're having some fun here. Let's say when n equaled 5, okay? Now, let's, let's go through it again, only we'll start with 100 this time because that was simple. Well, that doesn't look very promising, does it? Let's go 1,000. Oh, hey, whoa, what's going on here? Let's say 10,000. Now remember, we're just focused on the green one. Focus on the green one. All right, now I'm going to do this a few more times, and let's watch what happens. Look at what that curve starts looking like. Look at the mean. 25, 25. Standard deviation, 8.2. Standard deviation, huh, 3.7. Let's write that down. So I'm going to stumble over here. Whoops, I don't want that. What's going on here? I'm going to, let's do bamboo. All right, so when n equaled 5, the mean of the means was 25. To be expected, it's an unbiased estimator. That's just awful. Whoops, sorry, guys. Let me try that again. Let's make this just a little prettier. All right, so the mean of, so this is my sampling distribution, my standard error of the mean or the, the standard deviation of <clears throat> the sampling distribution was 2, oops, sorry, 3.7. Huh, something fishy is going on. Well, let's play some more and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, now we're going to go n equals 50. We'll keep it at 10,000, I think you're, and remember, we're just paying attention to means. Watch this. Booyah. Booyah. Keep going. We'll go out to like 90,000. And we'll go to 60, because not a whole lot else is happening. Look at that. The mean is 25. The mean is incredibly close to 25. I want to get it to 25. I'm stubborn. Yeah, maybe we can't get it there. Oh, there we go. Yay. And we're close enough for government work, right? And this, whoa, the standard deviation is way smaller. All right, let's write it down. So when n equaled 50, the mean of the means, or the mean of the sampling distribution was, boy, big surprise, right? It's an unbiased estimator. The standard error of the mean, or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, in this case, was 1.16 just call it 1.16, just to keep it simple. I guess I could have just done 1.2. Huh. All right. Now, remember, well, maybe we talked about this, maybe we didn't. But regardless of the shape of the population, let's make it skewed. All right? Look at this big, fat skew to this thing. I'm going to do, let's go back to our five. All right? And I'm going to let Ant, I'm going to do this 10,000 times. All right, remember sampling distribution. So I'm gathering 10,000 samples of size 5, and I'm finding their mean. Watch this. All right, remember, I'm sorry, the suspense is building. I can't believe it. It's skewed. Oh, my God. I hope it, oh, my God. Look at that. Well, hush my mouth. Let's see what the mean gets to. The mean of the population distribution is 15.529. The mean of the sample means was 15.529. It just keeps getting closer. Oh, that got a little out of hand. 15.53, 15.52. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? The standard deviation. Whoa, what did I just do? The standard deviation. Oh, I can't undo that. Let's reset that. Reset. And we're going to go. Let's go. Well, let's go. That was crazy. There, 5. 15.529. Sample. Sorry, guys. That's what happens when all hell breaks loose, right? 15.52, 15.5. Let's get it up there a bit. Let's get it closer. Yeah, close enough, right? Standard deviation is 12.5. Standard deviation is 5.58. So wait a second. Let's go over a page. All right? Now, 
We know that the mean of the population is 15 point, this is, by the way, arbitrarily chosen, 5, 2, 9, right? We know that the standard deviation of the population is 12.51. The mean of the means, well, we know it's an unbiased estimator, so we know it heads for at least 15.529. And the standard error of the mean, or the, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, oh, this, by the way, was when n equals 5, is 5.58. Let's do it one more time. I think you're starting to get the, get the idea here. If I go, let's go 50 this time. Watch this. It doesn't take half as long. Look at that. Look at the mean. 15.52, 15.5. It's just huddling right around. Look at that, 15.529. Standard deviation, we'll write this down one more time because we'll use it later. When n equaled 50, I ended up with the mean of the means. We know it's going to be 15.529. And the standard error of the mean ended up being, that's crazy, 1.765a. So notice, I'm going to blow this thing up real quick. Notice. Let's, let's do some observations here. For all of it, because the mean is an unbiased estimator, we know that the mean of the sampling distribution is going to be exactly the same as the mean of the population. But look at what happened to the standard error of the mean. Let's see, when n was 10, it was 2.6. When n was 5, so when n was smaller, it was 3.7. When n was smaller, the, san excuse me, the standard error of the mean grew. And when n was 50, look at how much smaller it is. Hey, that was true over here too, wasn't it? When n was 5, standard error of the mean was 5.58. When n was 50, it was 1.7658. Now, we're going to take those and we're going to put them in our pocket. But one more thing, we're, we're not going to write these down. However, I do want to show you one more thing. Look, what if it's not skewed? What if it's not bell-shaped? What if it's uniform? This simply means that every data value between 0 and 50 has the same occurrence, has the same number. Everybody kissed their mom 75 times, or, or sorry, the, <laughs> the, the proportion of students that kissed their mom 0 times last week is the same as the proportion of the... That's just gross. I should come up with a different... You get what I'm saying. Leave me alone. Okay, ready? Sample means. Here we go. So n equals 50. So my, my sample size is 50. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect 10,000 of those samples. Watch what happens. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Just like we promised, sample means distribute themselves normally. Isn't that awesome? Do it a few more times. And watch what happens. Look what we had for. Now we're up to, what, 130,000? And we're getting real, real close. To 25. So close that it could be argued if there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference. Okay? Okay, that was fun. Now, look at the standard deviation. The standard deviation of the original population was 14.43. Standard deviation of the sample means was 2.0395. Isn't that fun? Okay? Now, let's go ahead and go back here and start defining what's really going on. All right. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks. What does this central limit theorem really say? What it says is it's actually, it's really easy. It's crazy easy. What it says is this. It says that the means of the sample means, because they're unbiased estimators, they tend towards mu. So in other words, the mean of a sample can be used to approximate the mean of the population. Now, this standard error of the mean thing, this sigma sub x, now this is the key. This is the really big thing that we're able to use. What this thing tends towards is, this is the crazy part, you ready? It's the original population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And most importantly, because of what we know about sampling distribution, excuse me, sampling distributions, is that these are, these means are normally distributed. Now let me see if I can prove 
Let's see if I can prove what I mean with these standard deviations. Watch this. I'm going to change colors. Remember up here, we had a mean or, or a standard deviation back when I used, I'll show you my little distribution thing. Sorry, guys. i got a lot going on here, don't I? Remember this guy when we used these guys? We ended up, I forget, we started with a normal, right? And the standard deviation <clears throat> of the population was 8.2. And when n equaled 10, the, the standard error of the mean or the standard deviation of the, of the means of the sampling distribution was 2.6. Watch this. Let's figure out, is this equal to 8.2 divided by the square root of 10? Well, I got my handy dandy little calculator right here. If I go 8.2 divided by square root of 10, let's see what I get. Well, hush my mouth. This is approximately equal to 2.6. Remember when n equaled 5? Remember, still the same standard deviation of the population. This, by the way, was the bell-shaped distribution, wasn't it? And I think this guy was the skew. Okay, same population standard deviation, n equals 5. Well, let's see. If I take 8.2 and I divide it by the square root of 5, let's see what we get. 8.2 divided by root 5, and booyakasha, looks like 3.7. Crazy. All right, let's one more time, just because it's so cool to do. Right, 8.2 divided by the square root of 50. Remember, this is what we're saying that the standard error of the mean is. That's, by the way, is supposed to be a sigma. Standard, wow. Sorry, getting a little late this afternoon. This is, where am I? The standard error of the mean. If I take 8.2 and I divide it by the square root of 50, well, hush my mouth, I get 1.16. Now, okay, that may seem really intuitive. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little spaz moment. Because this comes from a population. But well, watch what happens, or excuse me, comes from a population which is normally distributed. Watch what happens when it comes from a population that isn't normally distributed. Let's see, do I get the same thing? Is this equal to 12.51 divided by the square root of 5? Well, 12.51 divided by square root of 5 on my calculator says 5.59, which if you remember is what I what I rounded that from, 5.59. How about this guy? If I take, is this equal to 12.51 divided by root 50? Well, second, whoops, clear, sorry, 12.51 divided by root 50, and I get 1.76, approximately equal to 1.76. Awesome. That's incredible. Now, you may be going, Ripley, okay, that's cool, but it's not as cool as you think it is. Well, okay, maybe. Let's play just a little bit. Let's see if we can if we can put this sucker to work. Now, there are there are some rules of thumb that we're going to need to discuss in class. But for right now, I just want you to get the beauty of the central limit theorem, all right? Because it's such a it's such an amazingly powerful tool. Okay? I'm going to apply it. I'm going to put it into practice. I'm going to show you something. Let's say, just for giggles, that, um, I don't know, Pepsi. Pepsi's got a one liter bottle, okay, of uh, uh, Pepsi. But I hope we all realize that when we're looking at a one liter bottle of Pepsi, it's not filled to exactly a liter, all right? I mean, think about that. you got a whole bunch of fillers. Maybe they get gummed up. Maybe they overfill. Maybe they underfill. But Pepsi's claim is that it's got 1,000 milliliters of Pepsi in each, in each one liter bottle. That's what 1,000 milliliters is. is a liter, right? I think so. And let's say that over the course of many, of, of, of a lot of observation, they figured out that the standard deviation is 2 milliliters. Okay? All right, so these things are precise, man. That's their claim. They, they, okay, they fill them up to a thousand milliliters or one liter, <clears throat> and they're two milliliters off in either direction. Which I mean, I think that we can all we could all live with, right? We understand this. Now, let's say that I take a sample of I don't know n equals. Let's say I take just to keep it simple. I'm going to take just a random sample. I rock, I walk into a Pepsi factory and I grab 49 of these things off of a shelf. I pour them into a graduated cylinder, all right? I find that the mean is equal to 999, all right? That's my mean. 
Here's what I want to figure out. I want to figure out the probability that that sample of 49 one quote unquote one liter bottles produces a value that extreme or greater. Now extreme I mean that small. Okay? Now watch how this works. Remember when we were just talking about one individual drawn randomly, all right? Dr drawn randomly from a population. As long as the population was normally distributed, we got to use z equals x minus mu over sigma, right? That was our z-score. Now, I don't know what the distribution is of the Pepsi. I know what its mean is, and I know what its standard deviations are. However, remember, because of sampling distributions, we know that the means are normally distributed, regardless of what the distribution is of the actual Pepsi bottles. We know that the means of the sampling distributions are normally distributed. We know that the mean of the sampling distributions is actually the mean of the population, and that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution by central limit theorem, now we're kicking into central limit theorem, so think of this right here as when n equals 1. If n is greater than 1, it's x bar, it's the average, minus mu, divided by, now remember this, it was the standard error of the means, which we actually know as x bar minus mu over the original population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now why do we get to do that? Why do we allow, why do we get to call this same thing right here? Why do we get to call this, which is very different from this, equal to z? Well, because the means of, standard, of, of sampling distributions are a normally distributed variable. And the central limit theorem tells me that the only thing that really changes is this standard error of the mean. And we can account for it by this formula. So watch this. You'll like this. We know that means normally distribute themselves, right? All right? Now, I can't say, I cannot mess around with what the distribution of the Pepsi bottles is. I don't know what its distribution looks like. I only know what the distribution of the means is. So watch this. I'm going to find a z value. The z value is equal to x bar, right, which I said was 999 minus 1000 divided by 2 divided by root 49. Ha <laughs> ha! You thought I just chose 49 randomly. It's because I'm lazy. All right, so what's that give me? Negative 1 divided by 2 sevenths, which is affectionately known as negative 7 tooths, which is affectionately known as negative 3.5. Now, remember, we are all, as soon as you see Z, little bell should go up, ding, ding, ding. We are on this guy, the standard normal curve. It's got a mean of 0. I'm talking about a z-score of negative 3.5. That is way the heck over here. The probability of grabbing a random sample of 49 Pepsi bottles and having them get a value, an average, excuse me, a mean of 999 or less is this area out here. Well, let's stumble back over to our, let's see, where's my z? All right, so let's see. To the left, if I go negative 3. Point, look at this. It doesn't even have three, negative 3.5 on it. The furthest it goes is negative 3.49. So I know for a fact, where's my paper? If I, I know for a fact that the probability of getting a z value less than or equal to negative 3.5 is actually going to be less than, what's this thing say? 0 0.0002. Now, Excuse me, what does that really tell us? What does that tell me? Now, in theory, <coughs> excuse me, we are actually testing the validity of the claim by the Pepsi company, that they're putting a liter of Pepsi in each, in each one of these liter bottles. That's, we're testing that claim. And since I stumbled in and I grabbed a random sample of 49 of these guys and ended up with a mean of 999 milliliters, which is shy. Now, you may say, Ridley, 999. It's one milliliter shy. 
Well, if I grabbed a single one, if all I had was a single x value and it was 9.99, well, the standard deviation for any one Pepsi bottle is 2 milliliters. So this is completely acceptable. However, because I grabbed 49 of them and their average was 9.99, the central limit said the, the central limit theorem says, wait, 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 something different is happening here. Now we're talking about distributions of means. We're talking about standard errors of means. Something is fishy. And therefore, it appears, the way we would write this up is, it appears Pepsi's claim, and this is all theoretical. Please don't take this to your Pepsi CEO and have me sued. It appears that Pepsi's claim is incorrect. They are underfilling their Pepsi. Now, this is an introduction to hypothesis testing. This is what we do with statistics. This is how we wield the axe of statistics. All right, This is how we prove things. This is how we use it scientifically. This is an introduction to hypothesis testing. And we will go into this far more deeply, hypothesis testing, um, I think in chapter 9. All right, but I just wanted to just put a little dribble on your tongue there, just because it's so cool. All right, thanks for your attention. Central limit theorem, all right, sample means distribute themselves normally. They have a mean of the population mean, which is mu, and a standard deviation, which is called the standard error of the means of sigma divided by root n. And most importantly, we get to talk about this guy right here, sigma over root n. Oh, so cool. So cool. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll finish up the, the chapter here with uh, binomial distributions. We're going to go revisit those guys. All right.